Hey, Sid. Well, then, what you doing? I'm just looking at the Kotobuki kids trying to decide what to build for an upcoming episode of Gumpa TV. Hmm. Oh, yeah? Well, I got one right here. Ah, the Hohei san. Uh, you know what? I, I think Ryan wanted to focus on the mecha. Oh, well, let's ask him. Ryan? Hey, guys. I like that kit. And I think you can build it in a week. In a week. In a week. Fine. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> hey, thanks, Ryan. Ryan? Hi everyone, welcome back to Gunpla TV, sponsored by Hobbling Japan. As you may have already seen, we're going to be looking at the uh, Hohei San line of kits here coming up in the near future. But today's episode, we want to focus on the Armored Core kits. And the Armored Core kits are uh, very much like Gundam in the, uh, their mecha giant fighting robots with weapons everywhere. And we're going to show you what makes them uh, unique compared to the Bandai kits. And for uh, this episode, we're actually going to be building the, the Fascinator. So the Crest Fascinator version. Uh, before we get around to actually uh, putting this baby together, let's have a look at what's inside the box. All right, so here's the fascinator. It's nice and purple. And uh, here's, the, here's the manual for the Armored Core. And you're not going to see uh, much different from, say, the Zoids manuals. And uh, at least they, uh, at the beginning, they give you a nice color sheet listing the different parts of the kit. But if you're like me, you'd kind of just skip that over and just proceed on to the next part because you need to see what it is you're going to be building. And if you've uh, done Kotobuki kits and you've seen the videos we've showed you before, uh, these are very similar. Uh, it's not as, I would say, precise or easily discernible as a Bandai manual, but if you've done model kits, you'll have no problem at all. Just pay attention to sequencing, which one goes, which part goes first. But uh, at the back here, this is really interesting, is they've listed all the different color shades that you would need if you're going to paint the kit yourself. And it's molded in color, of course, so you don't need to, but, you know, if you want to get in there and uh, paint it yourself, you, you'll know what tone and what shade to use. But we'll have a look at the runners here. Of course, it's an articulated model kit, so you're going to need uh, poly caps, and they give you a generous amount of these. You're going to have a few left over. And uh, one thing that is worth mentioning for sure in the Armored Core kits here, and I don't know if you can see it, I'll show you close, more closely after, but uh, there's actually an emblem already on this plastic piece. And uh, I'll show you that when it comes to constructing this. And uh, with that, there's no markings for this kit. All there is is just this one emblem that's already on this plastic piece. So what about the eyes? There's no sticker for the, the visor or anything like that. No, what they give you is your choice of which uh, transparent plastic to use. There's a, a green and a clear, and you can choose what kind of uh, visor you put on your, your kit yourself. And then you're gonna get lots of uh, doubling up on runners because you're doing both sides of the robot that are pretty much the same. And uh, some kits are very similar to each other, so what they do is they just give you a few extra parts, which is pretty interesting because this whole runner is vacant here. That's kind of odd when I first saw it. So more or less, you're looking at a plastic, snap fit plastic model kit, molded in color, just like uh, any other Kotobukiya or Bandai kit. So it's easy enough to say that. Let's actually uh, have a look at how everything goes together. All right, so I've laid out uh, my parts for the uh, Armored Core kit and I have the uh, completed sections uh, I've already done, you know, they're here. And I have the parts that we're gonna be completing for video and I also have the extra attachments that uh, this guy comes loaded with and these we'll put on at the very end. And uh, so first let's talk about the articulation. I mean, it's uh, pretty uh, standard for a plastic model kit. If you build lots of Gundams, uh, you know the range of motion you're gonna get once you get all this armor and extra pieces on here. The uh, arm is pretty free though. It tends to uh, move over. You can swivel it as much as you want. It's only hindered by the body. So if you uh, can tilt this up, you'll have lots of motion here. And of course the side cannons. And the torso, the torso is pretty unique in that it actually uh, assembles as three separate pieces. You're gonna assemble three blocks. And once that's done, you snap them together, just like this. And I've also got the, uh, the skirt here, which is very narrow. And I've got the head, and I'm just gonna stick the head on here right now. Just like this. Look, he's already ready to go. He's already looking at you. Okay, and uh, now we'll talk about what makes uh, these Kotobukiya kits different or unique from the Bandai ones that you may be familiar with. So uh, I'm gonna show you starting with the feet. Okay, so here I've got my uh, sub-assemblies. We're gonna put together 
uh, armored core leg. And uh, one thing that's worth mentioning is that uh, when you, we're talking about these, most people are familiar with Bandai and their lines of kits. And uh, people will all most likely compare any other kit to a Bandai kit because Bandai is a forerunner. So that's what we're going to do to here. We're going to compare uh, how these Kotobuki kits work in comparison to uh, Bandai grades, different lines of Bandai kits. Uh, so if we think about the master grade, well, we definitely, if you look at the size and articulation, you're getting a master grade kind of uh, scale here. But uh, it doesn't assemble like a master grade at all because a master grade a Gundam kit, you're going to assemble the frame with the armor going on afterwards. But that's not the case with the uh, Kotobukiya. With, with the Kotobuki kits, it's more like a Bandai high grade in that you're assembling subsections and the, uh, the frame only uh, shows where there is no armor. So as, for example, right here, this is a frame part, but it, there's no frame inside this leg. It's just this piece right here. But it looks like there's frame inside this leg. Another interesting part here is the foot. The foot, what you would do on a Bandai kit is you would assemble the heel onto the frame and it would uh, move with this articulation. But that's not the case with the Kotobuki kit. The Kotobuki kit, you're actually, uh, you're sliding this in here. This bottom piece will go on to lock into place. And the heel still has its own motion here. This is not coming off the ground as this thing flexes like this. And uh, also there's a reason for that. It's because if you look at the uh, pistons here, they have these actuators. They don't actually connect to anything. What you're doing with these is you just snap it together like this. And from this angle, well, it looks like the, it looks like those pistons are working and attached. But if you go with the full range of motion here, you actually see them come out like this. So, uh, well, it looks kind of odd. If you go through the, the full uh, range of motion, you're not going to have a, something sliding out or breaking like you would with a, a piston on a master grade kit. It's not going to slide out and give you difficulty putting it back in. And uh, going back to referencing the high grade here, the top of the leg, here's the only frame part you're going to see, it just slides into this poly cap here. And you have, of course, this, this motion here. And uh, what you're also going to get, which you don't get on uh, frames on the master grade kits that are all together in one piece, is you're actually going to get a little bit of articulation this way. So you're going to come up with a little bit uh, uh, more unique poses when it comes to uh, this use, uh, setting this thing up in action sequences or taking photos, if uh, that's what you like to do. So with uh, these two legs done, all it's really left to do is just snap them into the torso. So I'll do that right now. And just like that, I got the bottom of my mech ready to go. And now we're going to look at the uh, upper portions of the, of the suit because the arms assemble in much the same way. So let's look at the arms next. So here's my arm, and yeah, I mentioned before that you have this range of articulation, and uh, it's worth noting that uh, once again, you're not actually getting any kind of interior frame. It uh, just uh, goes together with certain pieces. So I've got the pieces here, and you can see that uh, all they really need you to do is just plug in this frame part into this shoulder part that you've already done. Oop. just like this you can see that it's got this motion here and now uh, one thing I think I want to bring to everybody's attention is that uh, often with a Kotobukiya kit with Bandai the, the fit is so precise that uh, if it's not going together or it's not staying together uh, most likely uh, it was the modeler who did something wrong with Kotobukiya they're a little more loose you know they don't have it seems to me the uh, fine precision that uh, Bandai can make so uh, if there's a problem when you're putting together a Kotobuki kit, uh, you'll have to determine whether it's actually a, the fault of the modeler or the fit of the kit. And once you get past that, you'll start to uh, realize you know, where you need to take care and where you need to pay special attention. And one thing here is that uh, I've got this joint I made. This is the elbow. And if I were to, to move it too much, I'm gonna, these pieces are going to separate and come apart. But uh, fortunately, they've designed this kit, so all I need to do is just slide it in. And once, it in, once it's in, it's not going to come out anymore. It's done. You don't have to worry about this falling apart at all. And you just plug it into your poly cap and you're good to go. See, I've got this other arm here. And I might as well slap on the big shoulder cannon that it comes with. And there's, this is the emblem I mentioned before. 
This is uh, already included on the piece. They've already put it in there. So there's no marking stickers for you to apply and there's no uh, warning decals or anything like that. All you're gonna see is this. But uh, if you want to add detail, of course, it's a plastic model kit. You can get aftermarket decals or things like that. Go nuts, however you feel like. Much like a uh, high grade kit, they actually include uh, many sets of hands depending on what uh, hand position you want. So uh, hands that are holding a weapon, for example, I've got one here. This one is already assembled here. This is going to hold the weapon, so it's going to stay on there. It's not going to come off. And uh, you can uh, swap, swap parts in and out depending on what look you want it to give. Of course, most of them are just the, the closed fists, but uh, that's okay. I think the mechs look better that way. And then I'll mention the uh, huge amount of armament this thing has. It's uh, pretty loaded down. I mean, every uh, area that you can think of that you can sport some kind of weaponry is, uh, has something attached to it. So this thing is definitely uh, meant, means business uh, and knows its role, that's for sure. So let's uh, put the final thing together, and for that I'm going to need a wider shot. So we're just going to zoom out a little bit here. So just like a uh, Gundam kit, you're going to assemble the top portion and the bottom portion. So let's uh, just slap these on here. Uh, this goes back to the uh, fit issue I was mentioning before. You have to be uh, extra cautious. And in some instances I found with Kotobuki kits is uh, if you have some experience with models, you might actually want to uh, deviate from the, uh, the way the manual lays out the build for you. Uh, in some cases they want you to uh, assemble things in certain order, but if you put a small part in and then you're trying to attach it to a bigger part, uh, things might fall off if you, as you have seen, but uh, what you might want to do is uh, actually assemble them in different orders so that you don't have, have parts uh, coming off or interfering with what it is you're trying to do. So my mech is pretty much good to go here, but I'm going to slap up uh, his uh, huge guns, missile pods, and everything else he comes with. Well, that head, for example, <laughs> as I was saying earlier, if I were to uh, put these missile pods on first and then put the, the sections of the kit together, it might actually work out a little easier in the, in the end. And then we have even more parts here that's supposed to fit in these little bulbs here. Go, go, go. It sure looks top heavy, but uh, with the, uh, the way the legs uh, go together, it can uh, hold it up pretty good. I haven't actually had it fall apart on me yet. It does really well considering uh, how disproportionate it is, com it is compared to a uh, Gundam kit. I mean, Gundam kits are very, uh, very humanoid. They definitely look like they're well balanced as a human body is. But with the armored core kits, uh, when you're building a robot meant for war and destruction, there's nothing uh, detailing how you definitely need it to function as a human would because it's a machine. It can do whatever it wants. All right, so here's the Fascinator version of the Armored Core Crest suit. Uh, I really liked it. It was a lot of fun, and I think it needs some paint, so I'm going to try and get on that if I have some time. If uh, any of you viewers out there have built an Armored Core kit and you want to uh, show it off, why not uh, submit your content to Hobbylink TV, and we'll get it up there as soon as we can. A lot. You may notice that uh, we've got some SD Gundam content on Hobbylink TV now, and that's uh, because people have started submitting it since our last episode. And uh, there's some amazing stuff, and I hope everybody checks out the uh, content that we're putting up. Also, uh, speaking of Plamo, I mean, there's more to uh, uh, plastic model kits than just mecha or, you know, cute Hoi Hoi anime girls, but there's also this series from Bandai. This is the, from the One Piece anime, which is enormously popular in Japan and now is gaining speed around the world. And Bandai uh, is well aware of this, so they picked up the rights and they've actually put out a plastic model kit based on the ship from the anime. And we're actually wondering if this is something that uh, the new viewers out there would like to see on uh, Hobbylink TV. So write in and uh, give us a comment. Let us know uh, if you want to see this or anything else on future episodes of Hobbylink TV. See you later.